Chapter one focuses on numerical processes. And we will be taking care of swords. So what is a sword? Essentially, a sword is an irrational number. What's an irrational number? An irrational number is a type of number. It's a decimal. So this rational number is a decimal. What type of decimal? It's a decimal that is non-recurring. It's non-recurring and non-terminating. So decimal number is non-recurring and non-terminating. At your level, the kind of sword you are taught is the one we call quadratic sword. Why are we focusing on quadratic swords? Very simple. Quadratic swords are those swords that are in the order square root of A. So, to the power of, so that is to say A raised to the power of 1 over 2. These are the kind of salts we are talking about. These are the kind of salts we are talking about in this uh, topic. All right. So with that said, let's go into uh, the problems now. So as you go from exercise to exercise, maybe you'll be able to remember some basic things you'll be taught. Now, if you look at exercise 1B, exercise 1B, Look at exercise 1B. For instance, you are told to find, simplify and make, uh, okay, that's to simplify the sort. Let's say number one, the square root of 20, for instance. Now, I usually tell students, when you're handling sword, sword is built with the concept of that. Look at it. See, see, see something you must know when it comes to a sword. You, uh, Let's take any so let's take any number. Let's want to find the square root of a. Mm -hmm. To find the to deal with this in so the answer will be perfect square plus uh, an irrational number i n. So if you are giving any number at all, okay, sorry, times, times, so this should be times. Your task is to break the perfect square irrational number A number that is not a perfect square is an irrational no, no, irrational, okay, sorry, sorry. Mm -hmm. Sorry, please let me correct that. You break it to a perfect square and a non-perfect square. I'm sorry about that. Sorry for that mix up. So that's that's the first thing you must do when you're giving any sort. So, for instance, we are giving twenty now. What is twenty? What two numbers can I multiply such that I have a perfect square? And in non perfect square. For this, it will be what? 4 times 5. Because 4 is a perfect square. And as such, the square root of 4 is what? 2. So the answer becomes 2 root 5. So you see why this answer is 2 root 5 quite easily. Let me take another one. Let me take question. Let's say question 8. The square root of 54. I think of two numbers. A perfect square. Remember that this one. Now you're going to apply your rules of divisibility here. Now you see where everything you have learned will be coming back to play. 
this 54 means that you remember that if I want to get a number that is divisible by 9, I'll add the digits. So I now know that 9 is divisible. Or rather, this number is divisible by 9. So what do I do? I divide this with 9 first. That's how you move here in the world. You want to use your calculator. You can just punch, check. And then it will give you what? 9 times. What's the remainder? 6. So I know that this will now be what? 3 root 6. No perfect square. Perfect square. So the answer becomes 3 root what? 6. Is that understood? Yeah. Good. Good. So let, let, let's, let's try one by yourself now. Now try for me question 14. Square root of 288. Can we do that? Look for square root of 288 for me. Square root of 288 for me. So with that, that was a question from that exercise, exercise 1B. That was question 14. Now, the square root of 288. Now, if you have a good knowledge of perfect square. Now, I can use different approach to solve this problem. Now, it's an even number. I can decide to break it in fours and whatever. But I also know that this number is divisible by nine. By adding the digit, I know it's divisible by nine. But a more advanced way to solve this one quickly in an exam environment is to know that the perfect square here is what? 144 times two. I divide this by two, I'm getting 144. So I know it's 144 because I, I know now, if I divide this by 2, I'll get 144. And I already have the background knowledge that 144 is a perfect square. So this will now give me, what, 12 root 2. So that's all about for exercise 1B. Now, exercise 1C. Exercise 1C is even easier. So I would advise that you take out time later and solve some of the questions on your own. Exercise 1C is even easier. Now, look at that. I'll take number one, two root three. How do you handle this? Now, usually uh, write a single sword. What we're trying to do here is to write this as what is called basic sword. That's basic sword. This is single sword. Now, so. The answer you get here is called your basic sword. Now, to write this as single sword, you must remember that this two you have here is actually this. Two times two, then times what? Three. Recall that this uh, A is equal to the square root of A times square root of A, which invariably is actually what? A times A, and that's equal to the square root of A squared. Have you seen that? So please, I need you to write. I really need you to write these things. You really need to write this. Thing. Is the ball too far? Saints, is the ball too far? No, please unmute yourself. All right, I'll give us one to attempt. Question. Let's look at question. Um, Let's look at question 12. This is 3 root 10. Let's all do that using the approach. Equal to, this will be equal to the square root of 3 times 3 times 10, which will be equal to the square root of 90. So writing that a single so the answer will be what? 90. So let's go to exercise 1D. Exercise 1D. Exercise 1D. In exercise 1D, now we are going to carry out simplification process. Simplification process. We now know how to see, 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 see the objective of this uh, exercise. This is more like uh, algebra now. 
sit as all the brass. See this sign. Anytime you see this, anytime you see this, let me write it. If I say, let's say the square root of two, see this as an imaginary A. Imaginary A. If I now say square root of three, see this as an imaginary B. I can never add A to B. I hope you, you know that. I can't add A to B. So what we are coming into now, we need you to have this background knowledge. All right, let's go. So, for instance, now, you are told to look for a question 1D. Let's look at question 1. I always like solving the first question because usually they are very simple. 12 plus square root of 4, 3. By applying the principle, uh, you can apply it openly here, but after a while, you may need to do it mentally. Now, this is the word square root of 4 times 3. Because 12, the perfect square in 12 will be 4 times what? A non perfect square, which will be 3, plus the square root of what? 3. The square root of 4 is 2, and that will be 2 root 3 plus root 3. So this is like saying. 2a plus what? a. 2a plus a will give me what? 3a. Is that not? Is that not? That's true. That's the idea. So let's now back in the mirror now. 2 plus 1 is, so this will be at 3 root what? 3. I've done that to try to calm you down because sometimes when students see this, they are like, ah, what is this thing saying? No, oh, this is 2a, this is a. 2a plus a is what? 3a. So the answer will be what? Root 3. 3 root 3. Apply your knowledge of what? Substitutions. So I've made a substitution of using a, a to represent what? Root 3. Right. So that's for number one. So let me give you one to do. Like I said, this is speed exercise. Okay, we may need to see some more. Let's look at, now try question three. Question three says, the square root of 175 minus 4 root 7. So let's try that one out. Right, so here it will be what? The square root of 25 times 7. It must be a perfect square and a perfect square and now if you look at this one as one of your answers, this one is still not a perfect square. You can still break this. This will be 4 times what? Now, this will be what? 4 root 7. Square root of 25 is 5. 5 root 7 minus 4 root 7. And that is root 7. It was uh, used... Used what? 5 and 37. 37. Check very well. 5 and 35. Let's look at question 11. In question 11, um, just to be sure that we are, we are have the same question, square root of 60 minus square root of 375 plus square root of what? 135. Now, you can choose to take them little by little. For me, if I'm doing this, I'll just pick this one first and look at it. How do I break this now? Um, how do I break this? I try to think of what is 60. I can divide this by 4, so that will be 4 times 15. Okay? I pick the next one. Just pick them one after the other. Nobody will penalize you for doing that. Now, any number whose last digit is 5, and the digit before the last digit is 2 or 7 is divisible by 25. So I know that this number is divisible by 25 by just looking at it. So this will be 25 times 15. So please take note. And that's the reason why you will need to rewatch. That's the reason why I'm doing all this recording. I want you to go back so that every little information, just like Marvel Cinematic Universe, you see in those their movies, I watch them. Why? Because they are very, very mathematical. You see a character looking like one character that is not relevant, but all of a sudden, oh, 
oh, was this where I saw that character then? Then that's how this is. That's how math is. Every knowledge is important, right? Then the next one, uh, you confirm for me 135. Uh, that would be, uh, I can see five, I can see 15, I can see nine. So that would be nine times one times 15. Uh, no, please, you can confirm. And please, these are, these are areas you can use your calculator to check. You understand? I'm not against your SS3 now. So you can use your calculator to check. You can use your calculator to check whether what we have done is correct. So this will give you 2 root 15. This will give you 5 root 15. This will give you 3 root what? 15. So I can couple them back. I'm going to have 2 root 15 minus 5 root 15 plus 3 root what? 15. At this point, I usually advise students, bring all the things that are positive together. This will now be 2 root 15 plus 3 root 15 minus 5 root 15. This will give you 5 root 15 minus 5 root 15. And that will give you 0. So, what, what is the learning point here? When you are given a problem like this, see, take it at your own personal level. When I, was, when I started learning, this was how I used to take my own. I take it small, small, do it. When you have gotten this, used to this one, you cannot begin to try to do them mentally. Just take it, break it down gradually, and then do this. So please, aside the video there, make sure you are copying. Copying notes is a very effective way of learning. So copy, make sure you're copying, make sure you're copying, you're writing, so that when you go back, you can correlate what you have watched with what you have in your book. Right, so I will leave that. And after the, at the end of this topic, maybe in my next class, or if we finish by tomorrow, I will give you tests. So make sure you revise. I will give you a test covering everything we have done here. I'll give you a test. I'll give you a time frame to finish so that I know that this topic, anyhow, it comes out in the exam, you'll be able to answer it. So get ready. All right, we now go to exercise 1E. Exercise 1E. What is 1E testing? 1E essentially is testing what is called multiplication. Multiplication. One is essentially testing your words. Multiplication. All right, so how is that done? Let's pick examples again. As usual, I will usually pick the first question of the exercise. Whenever you start a topic, uh, one secret is pick the first three examples. The first three examples are fundamental examples. They help you to understand what the, what the writer has in mind. So this one is square root of 5 times square root of what? 10. How do we solve this? How do we solve this? Very simple. Now, wait for now. Break the numbers. So what you see what I'm going to do? 10 is actually what? 5 times what? 2. Are you seeing that? I'm writing so much, but don't bother about that. Once you understand the idea, mentally you'll be able to do it. This will be square root of 5 times square root of 5 times square root of 2. Now watch this. Remember that we had said that the square root of A times the square root of a is equal to a. Does somebody remember that? Do you remember that? Okay, no, you don't need to, you can just respond with your chat. Do you remember that? If you remember that, then it means that this will now be what? Five times what? Root two. So the final answer becomes five root two. I'll take another one. 
I'll take another one quickly. You have the square root of 8 times the square root of what? 2. Now, you have to... No, look, now, look at this. Remember I told you that when you look at a sword, ask yourself, is there a perfect square? Now, in this number here, you discover this is what? Square root of 4 times 2 times the square root of what? 2. So what is the square root of 4? It is what? 2 times what? Root 2 times root 2. Now, root 2 times root 2. Borrow your knowledge from this. Look at this. It's what? 2. So this will not be what? 2 times what? 2. And that answer becomes what? 4. I see what the progression I'm doing. Or rather, I'm making. Look at it. Step by step. Step by step. Don't worry, by the time you're watching the video again, I think some of these things will come clearer to you. That's why I'm doing a lot of connection, connecting the ideas. Right? So, I want us, everybody, okay, let everybody do question four for me. Do question four for me. Question four. Let's solve question four. So, let's try out question four. Question four, the square root of 30 times the square root of 5. Now, the first thing, you discover that for this number, you can't break it to a perfect square. It's like there's a question. Let me see. Okay. Oh, 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 oh. Sorry, 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 sorry. I'm sorry about that. I'm sorry about that. I'll take note of that now. Right. So, square root of 30 times this. So, the first thing you need to do now, see, sometimes thinking is not a straight line. I come again, sometimes thinking is not a straight line. If you look at this now, we know from our rules of this uh, rules of divisibility that 30, 30 is divisible by what? Five, is that not? So I will break this to six times five times the square root of five which will now give me the square root of 6 times the square root of 5 times the square root of what? 5. I see that these two can go together to give me one rational number. Okay, I didn't say this. When you multiply two same quadratic sword, irrational number, you will get irrational number. I'll come again. When you multiply two same Two same, two identical quadratic sort or irrational number, you will get you will get um, irrational number. Keep this idea, keep these thoughts, because you're going to see these thoughts being used in this class shortly. All right, this will now give you uh, five times root what six. Now, this whole number position you have got in now is in front of the sword. Yes, very good. I love that. They are not perfect square, but we are now, you know, I said that we, sometimes in mass, we don't think in a straight line, but that idea can help us because we know from our rules of divisibility, which we learned in our JSS2, that I'm able to get five now. You see that with that, I'm able to get root five. And that will help me use it here. Because we already stated earlier, I noticed this. I see that this, I need an idea that will free me. That's a solution there. I see that very good, very good. Please, I, I like that. I like that more of that. You can send chats. You know, when you watch this in podcast and some of these things, they send chats, and the chat can also help the teacher to redirect. What he's doing. Thank you. I like I like that. Very good. So this is five root what? Six. Remember, I said that this five. This is root five. This is like root six. This is like saying a times five. How do you write it if it's to be algebra? It will be what? Five a. Is that clear? Is that clear? All right. All right. Wonderful. Wonderful. Okay. So I'll give you, let me give you one, uh, all right. 
Let's do question 11. No, do question 10 for me. Do question 10 for me. Okay, I will, I will just write in the board now. Do question 10. Okay, so look at this. Square root of 3. Now, this. Now, look at this. So let me now show you something else. This will be equal to the square root of 3 times the square root of 3 or to the power of 4. How do you know that this is testing your knowledge of salt? This is testing your knowledge of, of salt. So this will give me root 3 times what? 9, and the answer will be 9 root 3. Let me go back. Let me break it down. This root will mean this times this times this times this times this. Five of it. So you see now here, they are testing your knowledge of indices. Now pair. Three times pair. Three. Grade, uh, grade, something close to what we are done in grade eight, but in an advanced form, times what? What do you get? Is that clear now? So that's exactly what this question is trying to talk about. So by extension, if the power here is odd, your answer will be in terms of this root. But if the, if the index, sorry, if the index here is odd, the answer will be in terms of this root. But if, you're, if the index is even, the answer will be a rational number. All right. Okay, so for this, how do you go about this? I will advise you break the numbers out. This will be what? Square root of three. So I'm going to break them all out. This will be square root of 2 times square root of 3. This will be what? Square root of 4 times square root of 2. This will be square root of 2 times square root of 5. This one will be square root of 2, square root of 4 times square root of 2. Now, Look at this. Look at this one now. Now let's pair them. I'm going to pair. I'm going to be very free with myself. Now look at this. I can pair this. And I can pair this. So if I do that, see what I'm going to get. I'm going to get this will be 2, this 2 times square root of 3 times 2. The square root of 4 is 2 times 2 times the square root of 5, times this 2. So with this, I cannot get 2 times 2 times 2 times 2, which is 16, times square root of 3 times 5. And that will be 16 root 15. That's the answer. Are we true? All right. 